Hey everyone, welcome back. It's Lucid. We're going to jump back into our game with Disciples of YouTube, where we're playing Bandar Log, uh, and our partner is playing Marignan. Um, unfortunately, I have some bad news for you guys, um, and you may have noticed it, whereas I wasn't uploading quite as frequently in the past little hot minute as everyone else, and that is, um, I am missing some of my turn files to do for the Let's Play. Uh, like a significant number. The last episode I did was turn 27. And I do not have any trace of 28 or 29. Um, so we're going to hop back in on turn 30. Uh, most everybody else, just with the upload schedule we have, is doing a turn for, or like an episode for 29 and 30. And I'm not. I don't have it. So uh, I may, I can't remember if, I'll have to go back and watch the video I did for 27. I may have actually covered 28, uh, but I may not have. I don't remember. So anyway... Uh, wherever we are, whatever the last uh, turn I did with you guys are, I'm sure that I missed 29. Um, so without further ado, we're going to jump in and do turn 30. And um, I have probably more bad news for you. So um, I'm going to give you, we're going to kind of talk about this turn in context of things that have happened over the past few turns. And uh, it's not good news. Um, we may be making a quick exit, but... Um, okay, so first there's, uh, Mother Rook went up from Pangea, so they are going to have lots of gem-filled assassins. Um, or Satis, I'm not even sure which one. One of these guys. Pangea. Um, we caught some of Marignan's ra- or Miklin's raiders. I'll just show you this battle real quick. Um, unfortunately, though, I kind of messed up with my troop positioning, and my preachers, etc., got positioned pretty far back. Uh, and so the attack rear actually ended up getting them. And they kind of got lucky. So maybe I need to act- I didn't want to do it, but I may actually need to do, like, Twist Fate and Luck on these preachers specifically. Like, personal luck, I'd much rather do the AoE one. But they're kind of getting murdered. Um, so I don't really like that. Um, that said, you can see, we just, we do really quick work against these guys. Like, we killed 20 Eagle Warriors so fast. Um, but unfortunately we did, in terms of gold, we actually kind of came out a little bit behind, I think. Like, we killed 20 of these guys, which they're 15 gold apiece, so that's like 30 gold for two, and 300 gold worth of these guys, and then 200 gold of these, I mean 150 gold of these guys almost. So, I don't know. I mean, we killed like 500 gold of stuff, but they killed, you know, when you look at it, uh, like these guys are 45, so they're not expensive. These guys are pretty damn expensive, 160. So, yeah, not a great trade. Uh, I really have to protect my mages. That's really, it's really hurting me uh, with this attack rear business. I freaking hate flyers. Um... Okay, so we attacked here, we killed some of Marin- or yeah, Micklin's stuff, we killed some of Nazca's stuff. Um, okay, we're gonna watch this. So, actually, time out. Um, I'm gonna give you a quick update. I don't wanna flash the map up to show you, but basically, um, there's two things that happened that I missed, and I think one of them happened last turn. One is, um... Marignan was getting picked apart, right? There are raiders going everywhere, every which way. And on one hand, he needs to send small raiding parties out to reclaim provinces. On the other hand, he needs to... Um, he needs to catch some of the larger raiding parties with one of his doom stacks. And he managed to catch it, but he had some of his scripting wrong in his battle, like he had guys in a line formation instead of a blob. Uh, and then... You know, some of it was just a little bit of the roll of the dice. And, you know, he didn't have a ton of PD in the province. There were a few things, you know, but... Um, and maybe he was even attacking into enemy PD, I can't remember. Um, you'll have to watch his channel for that. But uh, he lost a significant army. Um, and he inflicted a fair amount of damage. And in some sense... It, it, except for the particulars, that was kind of what we need to do. You know, if we're all inflicting attrition on... Nazca, at some level that's okay. It's better to get his armies off the field as a team, like as 4v2. Four four um, but in the particulars of this, what it meant is that Nazca, because he had so many sacreds over there, um, was now set up to take his capital. And what we decided was, as a team, Marignan and I, was that 
um, we were not going to be able to... He had... There's enough Nazcan flyers that the only way we'll win a battle against them if we if he doom stacks up and we doom stack up is if we have significant pd and it's a big enough stack that he can break into our cap and so what that means is if he takes the marinese cap and we don't have our army there on top of our pd we have no chance of ever killing him because we can only kill his army with pd and so he made the decision to move uh, his army to defend his capital because we cannot risk losing the capital pd and we can't once the army gets on top, we won't be able to get it off. So he did that, but unfortunately, as you're about to see, uh, he made a mistake and he did not move in patrol, which, uh, to be fair, is a bit of a weird... Um, it's a weird mechanic, because you can't select move in patrol. You have to, like, move, and then you hit space, and then click move in patrol. And uh, I, it's something I've messed up before, you know, you forget to do it, you have to, I think once you've played the game enough, you go back and double check these kind of things, like, you hit Y, I, one of the things I always do when I'm, not always, I try to always do, is I'll go back at the end of my turn and I'll hit Y on every province I expect to have a big battle, like the key Y on my keyboard. And what that will do is it'll pop up a list of everybody headed to that province, and I go through and I check, I make sure, like, if it's a fort, do I have everybody on move and patrol? Um, and I see who's going to participate in the battle, and I make sure kind of the scripting's right and all that. That's kind of just the final check I do. And, uh, well, my partner didn't do it, so unfortunately, this battle we're going to see, I think, is... Uh, no, it actually, it could be. We'll see. This may... The, I'm not totally sure. This is either going to... I think this is actually going to be... I think this actually happened last turn, turn 29, that I didn't show you. Was, uh, he did not move in patrol to his cap. He only moved. And so his army is was inside his fort, Nazca attacked, and uh, the unfortunate consequence of that was that uh, now Nazca has a huge army on his fort, and Marignan has an army inside. And there were two options, like sit there and wait for Nazca to break through and then fight them, which actually may have been the better option, because um, what I did not necessarily know was that uh, our god would come out so soon, so our god came out like four or five turns early. And by that time, I'm pretty sure Marign uh, that Nazca would have broken through. Because we need to protect the god if, if for no like even if Marignan loses, just so I can have the Ethereal Bless. So maybe this was the wrong call. I didn't actually ask him. He's, he's kind of tired of playing the game. But uh, I didn't ask him how long the fort was going to hold. Because that was some important calculus we should have done. Anyway, so this turn, this battle we're about to see, um, is him coming out of his fort trying to protect it, uh, basically trying to break it free of Nazca. Uh, and he had some mercs that were nearby, and they were going to come in. Um, and so he's got his little mage death ball here. And the hope is that, that you know, these mages will kill the flyers before we all get murdered. Now, one of, just there's a few things to, to nitpick here. One of the really hard things is we do not know. He has Divine Blessing. We don't know whether Nazca is going to do hold an attack rear or attack rear or attack closest. He can do either of them. And what makes it really hard about that is we don't know how to position our troops. Because on one hand, if he does attack rear and we put a lot of our guys in the back, or like attack closest and we put a lot of our guys in the back, then there won't be enough uh, guys to protect the mages. If we do hold an attack, then unfortunately the flyers now take two turns to fly up and then to land. And if they do that after two turns, they land after four and in that case, our guys end up like running out in front, and then these mages aren't terribly well defended. So probably better to like hedge your bet, put a little blob behind, and then they kind of run forward and splash into the backside of our defense. Because um, the goal, the goal of this is to minimize our surface area. And this was one of the mistakes. If you go watch Last Pretender's channel, you'll see um, when we lost the little mini skirmish outside of uh, outside of his cap was that. Um, he had like a big line of troops, and that means these very killy birds can go kill everybody quickly. And we're not relying on our troops to kill him, we're relying actually on these alchemists to cast Bladewind. And you can see here he gave them gems so that we have, um, yeah. Anyway, so we'll see what happens. This is going to be kind of, this is the last stand for Marignan.
So the monkeys are firing, so he's on hold and attack, and that's gonna be good and bad. The bad- okay, so this was the first Blade Wind script, and you can see there's nothing to hit with Blade Wind, so they went and did Earth Elementals, which is not gonna be terribly useful. Now our guys run forward, and you can see the mages are, like, very exposed. Um, fortunately, we have enough defense here where we're probably going to kill the guys who actually made it to the back. Um, but it's very hard to have, like, a dense cluster of dudes when these guys are on hold and attack, which is really what we need. And I I don't even... I mean, the, the what we figured out, because we did some testing, the best way was to put a blob behind it and to have them smash into this blob at the time when the hold and attack orders would land. So that would be like, you put these guys here, and then you put some guys back here. Um, but, th and this is what happens if you don't. So, not really perfect formation, but... Um, we're, they're not really doing the, a lot of the blade wins, unfortunately. And, kind of because of this, there's a few consequences of not really having this cluster around the mages. One is, they're doing the blade wins at some distance now. Or they're picking other spells to hit stuff close by. And what the effect we really want is we want these guys really close to these mages so that it's a very accurate kind of dense carpet laying of blade wind. But you can see the blade wind's still doing a fair amount of damage. There's, there's another problem with shooting it this far. Instead of kind of hitting like a dense cluster, it ends up spreading out more the farther away you are, kind of like a shotgun. And we don't want to sprinkle the damage out amongst his troops, we want to just, like, lay it in to him. And hit- we want a lot of hits on the same unit to get a kill, not to, like, you know, damage a lot of them like this. You know, we don't want damaged units, we want dead ones. Um, like this one's damaged. So... You know, it's- it was an uphill fight, this is just such a strong strategy that unless you have something that it's just, it's really hard to fight against. Uh, and I'm going to be fighting against it soon, because Marignan definitely felt the full, the more full brunt of the, uh, of the Nazcan attack. And now we have a retreat and it's over. So, um, you can see actually we were pretty close to winning. There's only a few guys left on the field. So I think with a little better formation, he actually might have been able to win this. And if he won this, we might have been able to keep our god. Um, or at least we would have figured out, I, I don't know if he would have, he probably didn't want to keep playing, but we would have figured out some way to, uh, to at least let me have the god. Because the god is very important for my bliss. Um, yeah. So, uh, with that, that's kind of the fall of, of Marignan here, and then there was a battle inside the fort where he just scouted. But you can see we have our god now. Um, I don't know if I want to do... Okay, well, did we do the rest? Okay, there was a battle here. We took this back from Nazca. So... Um... I don't know if I want to do, like, a full debriefing of kind of what happened. You all have probably watched it and have your own opinions. One thing I'll just say is that this Nazca build is very strong, and the Nazca nation is very strong for kind of cancerous blesses. Uh, just due to the Condor Warrior spam. Uh, otherwise, I think it's probably fine. I think Sapayas are probably at the right power level. I think I think a lot of it's fine except for the Condors. The Condors are the kind of broken part. Um, that said, we, there were a few things from my perspective that we did kind of critically wrong. One is, we, we went to war too soon. Um, like this fort here, we went to war. And... Uh, yeah, this... and we, we lost, what, this fort and this fort from going to war too soon? Um, and against good players, they're going to know we were going to attack them. We didn't Diplo back, so anyway... Yeah, it was basically a bad... A bad decision to go to war when we did. We should have waited till this infrastructure was up, and he had armies to defend it. Not only were these forts just begging to be defend, or taken, but we didn't have any armies. This big army was up here when we started. It was really just a bad idea. Um, some of this, uh, to be fair, was fort placement. Like, this was not a great fort to get out super early because we couldn't defend it. Um, like, in general, you don't ever want to build forts you can't defend at all. Um, 
But on the other hand, you need forts to defend certain areas of your empire, but you need to keep armies near it. So I was kind of just playing me and he was kind of playing him. I mean, I, we were talking together and I was kind of giving him my thoughts and stuff, but um, he was not really ready to go to war when we did. Um, that said, we did need to, we felt at the time we really needed to protect Pangaea because we did not want them falling to Nazca or Miklin. And we felt the timing was somewhat critical, um, though perhaps we could have wait and, uh, waited because they did have a very defensive-oriented build with assassin cancer and stuff like that. Um, so it probably would have made sense to wait two or three turns until he got some industry over here, because this was a horrible way to start the war, just losing all this stuff at the beginning. Um, and then while I've done a pretty good job counter-raiding and moving appropriate forces and PD and this, that, and the other, now Marignan's had a lot more to, uh, raiders with a lot bigger armies, and a lot of his stuff he just couldn't defend because we went to war at the wrong time. Um, or, you know, he didn't have the armies over here when we went to war. So, uh, like, all this stuff, basically the second he attacked us, there was nothing much we could do to defend this. Uh, but then even this stuff over here, we just, you know, he didn't do a great job. Uh, and it was hard, for sure, uh, inter like, predicting raiding moves. But Sai, who's the guy playing Nazca, is a really good player, and so uh, it's really hard to predict what good players are going to do. Um, yeah, and then it came down to a couple key battles, and there were, you know, we just lost those battles. So um, some of the guys actually on Discord were giving us shit about our bless, and I'm like, why the fuck would you take Ethereal in prison? And, uh, you know, you can hate on it. And I know other people in chat did. And actually, uh, The Last Pretender, you'll probably hear on his channel, he was not very fired up about it. Um, and yeah, it's not, like, I don't think it's an overpowered build, but I think it's pretty solid. Basically, if you look at it, we're playing full-on scales. We have uh, Order 3, Productivity 3, Growth 3, and all we had to take was a Misfortune hit and Magic 3. And for me... I'm only one point off on my temperature. Now, for Marignan, he's three points off on temperature, so the temperature is actually somewhat of a hit for him. But for me, I'm like full scales. Um, now, I had a shitty expansion, but I shouldn't have. I mean, I just screwed up with this uh, Crystal Amazon province. But um, I don't think the build is bad, and I think, sadly, unfortunately, we're not going to get to show you. I may do another Disciples game with a build similar to this, because uh, I'm quite sure I can win a game with it. Uh, though, I, unfortunately, this is not going to be the game. I'm going to, I mean, I'm look, my partner died, I'm going to go down swinging. Um, and for the time being, we're going to keep fighting Nazca, though I'm not necessarily hell-bent on it. Um, I think I have like a 1% chance of winning the game, if that. Um, but we're going to, you know, Forgotten Country, guys. Um, okay, so anyway, basically my partner's dead. Um, the god, we had, I've been telling him for like five turns, we got to research Thaumaturgy to get his god out, because he needs to get um, teleport researched. But he was basically saying by the time it's the end of the year, he's going to be dead. So I think he did start researching it towards the end. But uh, we didn't know the god actually came out early. So now his god's trapped in, but uh, he hasn't done the research. So we can't get his god out. If we got his god out, um, I think I would actually have a, a shot at winning. Uh, but right now I think it's kind of... It's probably not going to happen. I just don't see how it will. But, you know, we're going to play out and uh, go down swinging and... Uh, I don't know. I mean, we'll try to win. We'll see. We're not going to... We're not going to try to be kingmaker or anything like that and pick who wins. We're just, we're going to fight for the interest of keeping the game going as long as it can and having us be as powerful as we can, which I think is the most fun way to play, uh, even when you're probably going to lose. Um, so uh, I've been moving armies back and forth to try to catch somebody pinging one of these forts with the raiding party. So uh, I had a big group that had moved up here. We're going to move them back down here, and I don't know if Nazca is going to try to jump on top of this. Uh, it's possible, so we're going to do that. Um, we're going to move a small squad here to uh, counter raid. I've got... Um, now, unfortunately, I scripted these guys wrong. These guys should be on, like, Holden attack, and they should probably be, like, right here. And these guys are on hold and fire. These guys should be on hold and attack. They're not. So my leaders are actually, unfortunately, very exposed. 
Um, I have them positioned kind of right at the front with some PD. I probably could have done a bit more, uh, but I'm kind of trying to save up. I need to put a lab and a uh, temple in here so I can start recruiting stuff and then upgrade this fort. Uh, we're not doing that yet. I'm also moving a scout here so that Marignan can give this fort to me next turn uh, and he can bow out of the game. So, yeah, it's, uh, I kind of, I, I feel bad I didn't have all the turns to show you all this, but, uh, we did get to see this pretty good battle here. Um, on this front, we can see Satis has a big army and is kind of moving forward, and I'll be totally fine if they eat Nazca, and then I can kind of maybe get them to, like, if I get all of this and they get this, I'll be kind of happy. Um... So I kind of want him to move this way, and I can negotiate some of this, and then I'll just kind of... I'll probably tell them I'll be their little disciple and help them try to win, which is not really the case. Um, but I do want... I do need land uh, and safe borders to get some research economy going, and um, I'll decide who I support, whether I support Team... Uh, Cancer Bless Free Forge, or whether I support uh, Assassin Cancer. Um, or I could even potentially support these guys, but I don't think I will. Um, largely for the reason... I don't know. I mean, I guess this is a sunk cost now. There is a small argument to make, and it's a small argument to keep my partner in the game and to eventually try to take this back um, and then resurrect our god and have my bless active. I, I wonder if I can call god as a disciple. If I can do that, I don't think I can. I think call god is for my disciple, not for him. So I don't know. He doesn't want to play anymore. <laughs> He's like super fed up with the game. It's kind of actually annoying a bit for me, but, um, yeah, it, it would be, like, min-maxing, it might be best to give him one of my territories, or to come down here and help him hold this, like, to super commit a big army, I cut, but I need to give him a territory that's safe, like, I don't know, maybe that. It's costly, though. I don't really have enough to kind of give out freely. Um, and it's not really worth anything unless I can take a big army and go take this. And I don't really have that army yet, and I probably won't have it for a while. The, the problem we've had, and somebody actually pointed out in Discord, is we can't, like, as a team, we came in to help them, and then we got eaten. And while these guys are pushing forward a little bit, like, you know, he's taking this. A, a lot of it, he's just taking back stuff I think that was already his. Like, I think this was his throne. Um, so, these guys are pushing forward, but too slowly to save us, and I can potentially push in and take Marignan back, but I, I need these guys to wipe some armies off the board. So, it'll be interesting to see what Nazca does, whether he kind of continues to lay into uh, Team Bandar or Marilog, or whether he moves this big army over here to attack. But I'm probably going to try to take this. I think this is going to be a goal for me to keep it. Uh, and then maybe even some of this land. If I can do that, I'll be kind of happy. The, the only good thing uh, is that because I have really good scales, or we have really good scales, I do not actually need the Bless. I do not... In no way are we reliant on the... Am I reliant on the Bless? Bandar is a nation that can be played scales, and uh, my intention is to do that. So the other thing, I, in terms of movement, I have 25 PD here, and I think I cranked it up this turn. I'm expecting him to raid it, and I want to try to catch him. So I'm, I'm, tr I'm trying to catch him in PD traps, and he's a good player, and he knows that, and he's not really biting on a ton of them. But anyway, that's kind of what I'm trying to do. Um, the other thing is I've been summoning Ganas, as I kind of mentioned I should a while ago. And these are going to be really, really good chaff. Um, they're ethereal, decent defense, and uh, they hit okay. Unfortunately, it's an MR negates weapon, but um, just, I mean, you can't ask for much better in terms of chaff. And I've gotten a Bane, who's going to be leading them, and he's going to come out here. So we're going to continue to get Morganas. I need to get um, Enchantment 3. Once I get Enchantment 3... 
I can get Revenants, which are Death One Mages, which can summon more Ganas for me, because I don't really want my Pretender doing this, but I'm in desperate need of Chaff, so that's his job for the moment. Um, I think that's it for this turn and for this episode. I apologize again for this business with like not having all my turns. Um, I, it's really a, f a function of me not doing all my turns live, which I don't think I can do, and I don't expect to, and I'm not promising to do. Um, but um, the turns are not backed up in any way like they are if you play on Llama Server, like where it sends you an email of each turn file. So on Llama Server, it's basically impossible for me to not have turns because I can always go fetch it. Uh, here I can't. So I think I'm, this is probably the last game from YouTube, or like that I'm going to put up on YouTube that we play on uh, like Earth.Snack or on any of the Discord servers. I think in the future, it's going to be all Llama Server games. Uh, just because it, I, I'm not reliable enough to remember every single turn to save it. I know it's not that hard, but, you know, the turns kind of blend together and you think you saved it and you didn't. Uh, anyway, um, thank you guys for watching and I will see you next episode. Uh, wish the monkeys of Bandar Log luck. Wish the monkeys of Bandar Log luck. Thanks.